Hi you guys. They consider this a small ice cream cone. Can you believe it? If that's a small, I'd hate to see the large. <laughs> Sandy's with me today. Say hello. Hi. Just came out the lake, right across the street from the lake in the park, just to get some ice cream because it's blazing hot. But you get yeah. two. Yeah. Can you imagine what a large would be? It'd probably be stacked all the way up to here. <laughs> No wonder people in this country weigh 400 pounds. I know my grandfather had some of these old planers, woodworking tools. Old sharpening stone. Inside the Stockwell Historical Society at an old train depot, which is now a museum. The old different types of uh, barbed wire. I, if I remember right, there was something like over 160 different U.S. patents on barbed wire. Over 160 different ones. A lot of old chunks in here too from the people that travel by train and then they'd come here and they'd get on the steamships that went down our lake. I'm right on the shore of the lake. Some of the old reading glasses. This here looks like an old, yeah, an old newspaper press. The old Mayville Sentinel. Yep, an old printing press. You can pause that to read it. How cool. Quite a machine. Still have some old original dresses. How cool is that? Boy, whoever wore that was petite and small. And this person was even smaller yet. Do you see the waistline, Sandy, on this dress? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Must be our kid wore that. No, it's a young woman. I bet Trump would like this. It's an old voting machine. U.S. Standard Voting Machine, Rochester, New York. That's just north of here. We used to have a company in town. I worked for them many years ago that would make uh, voting machines, and I worked for them for a time. That's a parlor radio, late 1920s. The horn is separate from the cabinet. Old typewriters. I used one like the one on the right when I went to college for a brief time. And this here is, uh, in this box, is our lake. And what it's shaped like. I'll show you the lake is right out here. There's the lake right there. The paddle ship, um, the Chautauqua Bell, they store over there, but I think they're out giving rides on it today because I don't see it. The old musky nets. Chautauqua Lake is the musky capital of the world. And these old, uh, there's an old railway wagon and the old, uh, Steamer trunks and stuff when they used to travel. Back in the old days. This is the building that I'm in right now, the old Mayville Depot, circa 1915. Wow. 
I'm trying to cover as much as I can before my battery dies. Old bottles. Old horse and buggies and everything. Pardon me for the mask, but my wife's coming. Oh, okay. She insists I wear this, so I don't want to. Oh. Okay. That's but anyway, right. I wanted to show you. Can you imagine? Coming into Mayville on a steamboat, and this was right across the street. This is the corner of the station. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, the Chautauqua House. Yeah, isn't Wait, that and, amazing? You know, that just. And then, that's one of the ice houses over there. Yeah. Where Mayville Park is now, but you know, the size of those. Yeah, and that's similar to the picture that's out front that it's, you showed uh, me with all the different I think uh, they might steamboats. Have crap part of it or done something different, but you know, locomotive here. And, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that's all about there, but just, you know, amazing. Yeah, it was really happening back then. It just hustling and bustling. It's just everywhere. And there's, well, that picture's right over here, Clint, but here, you know, doing the ice. Yeah. On the lake. And yeah, when the guys were cutting the ice with the chainsaws, I went out there to, to volunteer for that, for doing the ice castle. Mm. And how they do it. It's really interesting. And this is a picture right over here, I guess. Yep. But yeah, there's just tons of stuff if you, you know, look for it. Yeah. You're up at Point Sechokwa on the um, east side of the lake became the Jamestown Westfield and Northwestern eventually. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta go up. Okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Buddy, how come? It's the old fire hall. Mm -hmm. And they got the old badges over here for the chiefs and everything. Yeah, I've never really looked. All kinds of different badges, books. Old fishing spears for the muskie in our lake. Big old muskie bamboo rods. Look at the length of those. Look how huge those are with the old reels on them. That's a practice rifle right there for practicing. You know, doing the twirling and all that. Whatever they call it. Yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, it's truly amazing a lot of this stuff survived over the years. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing it did. Yeah. Especially like the old trunks and the different cases in that. Wow. Yeah, there was so much on this lake. You know, it's just all going. Big hotels all up and down the lake. Yeah. Railroad up each side of the lake. Um, oh yeah, it'll it'll never be what it was. So the ones that did live back in those days, I'll tell you, they really got to experience it in its heyday, mm -hmm. when just everything was going on and there was so many people. Really interesting. And then this is how they harvested the ice off the lake with horses. And I'll tell you, when they cut those blocks, they're heavy, they're thick. I know when I went out there, they were 18 inches thick the day they were cutting them with chainsaws. Yeah, didn't they have like little spikes on them, little pointed? Yeah, in the one uh, book, there's pictures. Yeah. And then these decoys here, these fish decoys, I'll tell you, those are something else. Yeah, all that was something. The highest that I've seen a decoy go for on the internet was uh, $225,000. And it was only about the size of this one up here, but there's, there's people that collect those things. I used to collect fishing gear, but my 
my uh, selection got so big and my house was too small. I was living in a cottage down in Lakewood, right on the lake, and <laughs> I didn't have anywhere to keep it all. Yeah, that's, that is a problem. I collect real little things. And, um, yeah. No place to put it. No. It can get out of hand, too. Yeah. Well, there's an old muskie going way back. What a catch that must have been. I'm not so sure if they called that a canoe back in the old days. It's more like a skiff, really. And then this right here is a homemade bobsled. Isn't that cool? The front separate from the back. Old homemade bobsled. <coughs> Check out front. Some old railroad stuff. And they got the ticket master. Uh, the old switchboards. All early telephone stuff and and then uh, telegraph keys, telegraph sounder. Uh, you know the old candlestick phones. I remember those. They were heavy. Accident. That's the one we got now, but the rest of these are gone. And that one is the same one, but these different vessels are gone. This picture over here. This whole color points to Tucker. Oh, wow. Uh, the whole points to Tucker was designed by Frederick Lowell. That's what the boats used to look like on the lake. We had a bunch of them. Very famous architect, you know. And this oh, was yeah. Creations, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. there's just all kinds of interesting things. Yeah. Yeah, this is truly neat. This right here, you guys, is the floating stage. It used to be down on the other side of the lake, way down where the bridge is, down in Bemis Point. I'm up in Mayville. And this big stage floats, and they anchor it, and they can move it around the lake, and this is where bands play. But there hasn't bands played on that in a long time. But if they ever do bring it back to where bands play on it again, I'll come up here for a concert. This is one big lake. And that's the old train depot I was just in right there. That's the original one. It's the only part of what I was showing you that's even left. All right, you guys, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.